Well, greetings, YouTube. This has been what we selected for the vacuum of the month, but upon using it, there are some things that are just not right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix them. And the first thing is the self propel needs to be adjusted. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pop the headlight off. It always makes that unnerving sound, especially in an old vacuum where the plastic can be brittle. Uh, and the way I adjust this is with this cable. Uh, by moving this cable back and forth. I don't know if there's maybe a more proper nope, adjustment. No, nope, that is the adjustment. That's and uh, I'm joined here by a friend. So first of all, let's see. And usually what I like to do is I like to lock the, the drive there and then I like to look at the clutches down here to see if they're neutral. Um, you can't really look at the clutches here like a regular wind tunnel. But here's what you do. You lock this in there, and this thing should be perfectly straight, straight up and down. Yeah. And if it is, then you're in adjustment. If not, then. So it's only one direction. So that's what. That so let's pull the cover off first. Let's do that. Yeah. Where we can see it, and I can I can actually look at because it's going to be a very minute adjustment. Uh, I think most people would have no wouldn't actually adjust it. What do you think about putting something this old in the dishwasher? I would probably not have a problem with it. I assumed that's what we were going to do. <laughs> you assumed. I just assumed. You assumed it was going in the dishwasher because I put everything in the dishwasher vacuum related. All right, uh, let's grab that. And I had a uh, magical. Had a magical, magical uh, vacuum tray. And this is something I always liked. This is rotated up. I always thought that was super cool. So let's grab the screw there, the screw there, and I'm going to pull this off with the drill. But when we put these on, I'll do it by hand because I am always afraid. If you turn the tension clutch way down, there's no danger. There's no danger. Yeah. Just say, when I keep the tension clutch, I don't ever have problems. I don't usually have problems. Not the Hitachi. I find the Hitachi to be very good. I agree. That's what I use. Yeah. I've... That's what I love about these, this. Is it was meant to be worked on. Everything on oh, here. I forgot one. Did I forget one? Yeah. I got that one. There should be four. I did. You are counting. I detect three. Where's this fourth? Uh, I dropped it in the machine. Oh! Okay. <laughs> so Reggie notices my little sins. I, well, I didn't actually. I just you can see the carbon going. dust on here. So maybe it's a good thing we're cleaning this off. Oh my. Yeah, no, this poor thing is so go on, service. So going back to where the clutches are and where I had adjust them. Let's pull this thing. It should just pull straight out. Yeah, there we go. That pulls out. Uh, so the clutches, let's uh, zoom in a little bit for for you folks at home. If you excuse the sloppy camera work. So when the handle is in the neutral position, right there, there should be a minute gap in between the both clutches. This should be straight up and down. And the gap, again, there should be an even gap on both sides, and there's just not. So that means this is slightly out of adjustment. So we're going to go ahead and adjust it. Meanwhile, we decided to strip this thing completely from uh, just self-propel to a full-on. So what we did, we ended up having to take the bag off, which I'll explain that to you real quick. And we're going to explain how some of this stuff comes off. So the bag is held on here with this, and you have to pry this white thing that sits inside the bag off. Hold that upside down. This is set in there. That has to be screwed off, and then this comes apart in two sections from uh, that. Now, we've also taken, this should just lift off, and you always kind of want to, when you service this, clean in here. Yeah, so it and seals clean good. in here. And you're going to find all sorts of things. I found dead spiders, broken light bulbs, all sorts of things in here. Yeah. Just kind of build up in this section here. Um, and then 
keep hitting the lights up here. This is apparently a taller vacuum. Um, so we're gonna actually break this part and we're gonna put stuff in the dishwasher. We're giving it the full the full month. It's gonna get a full service. It's, it's getting the full month. I thought I had services when I first got this, and maybe I did. But my parents' cleaning ladies, it lived with my parents for a while, and their cleaning ladies started using it because it is such a fantastic vacuum. Oh, they so, clean. I mean, they're un near, hard yeah. to beat. So we are going to continue br this breakdown uh, a little bit, and we're going to zoom in right there. We're going to pull this part off. And some stuff's going to go in the dishwasher, and some stuff is not. You want to put the screws in here. Yeah. So you're opening the back cover here. That, pull it off. It's ready. That's All right, now I just got one more screw to take out to get the front off. The hidden screw. And this guy, I have lost so many of these and I've put them together with this thing off. So we can now see the mechanism. Oh, and it's in, uh, we gotta love a good mechanism. Uh, we can see where the brake has yeah. started to wear off. And the fix for this is actually a genuine Hoover part. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to clean that shit out of there. So we're gonna clean the rest of this out. We're not gonna do it all on camera because it is kind of tedious. I need a longer screwdriver. Okay, so as we we're getting this thing apart, we've got this cover off, we vacuumed and blew this out with compressed air. But there are tabs in the front, and you want to just kind of work your way top down. And if I grab another screwdriver, this might be easier. Ah, oh, there we go. Alright, and we got one more here, and it's going to rock off from the bottom. So as I you can see the this is starting to pull off, and that pulls off, and you can see obviously not a sealed system made way before that whole idea. And now we have the cord winder, and there's a special tool that I didn't know existed till today, and uh, with some good help from Reggie, he suggested we use this tool Ooh, on here. Right here. All right, so what this does is this holds the oh. tension on it so it'll hold it in place better. Yeah, we might give it one or two more winds while we're... Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll lubricate the spring as well. Whoop. Okay. Usually there's two of those little hooks. This one's only got one. They must have caught costs. <laughs> Something. I've never seen one with one before. Oh, it could be an aftermarket cord reel. Who no, knows? No, it's I'm just kidding. kidding. They cheaped oh. out on us. They cheaped oh. out. God damn it, 1980s Hoover. So that's they what they did by doing that is they they bought their money for their blow. That's what they did. Somebody did, yeah. Had quite the habit, I'm sure. Oops. If I was a corporate executive in the 1980s. It was the 80s. It was the it was the 80s. So now that we've 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 uh, put this on and this this white center piece is held into the housing with the screw back here. You want to make sure before you take that screw out, you have this tool in place. And then you just kind of through the various RFSI. Here's the thing I never liked doing with any cord reel. I've learned not to, whoop. And that is what you don't want. Yeah, you don't yeah. want that thing. Because, I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it would be inconvenient. your way back. You want me to... I don't know what we need here. You gotta wiggle it. Oh, that's right. It's up there. Okay. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. I had to do this to mine. <laughs> the this tool is... will make it easier. Well, again, I, I feel like this... Um... I feel like we're gonna cheat here. I think we're gonna cheat. <laughs> now, the duct tape is only temporary to hold the tool. But because it keeps moving on us. Again, when, when it's got the two hooks on there, it holds better. I This is a... Alright, well, it's not going anywhere now. Yeah. Now we're hooked on this side. <laughs> <That's laughs> Alright, so that's... the Your so Coke money was reinvested in duct tape for this. Thank you, Hoover. Yes. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful thing. And this whole thing just comes right out nicely. 
I've even perfected ways of weaseling new cords onto these stupid I've done things. that. It's been a very long time. I mean, uh, literally, properly weaseling it in there. Now we just gotta clean this old disintegrated... Yeah. Um, we gotta clean this guy. This is the... F wow. Uh, yeah, that's, so that's what happened. Is that grease that's stuck on there? What is, no, or is that the plastic part that's melted to that? It's the old... It was sort of a rubber material, and it okay, just... Okay, I know uh, the material. Yeah. Kind of like the down. Singer motor mounts of the time. Yes, exactly. Uh, so you can see right there, we're going to be replacing that right there. And uh, that just comes out with the screw on the other side, right? Just pull that out. It's riveted. Oh. So this mechanism will stay in place. This mechanism will uh, we'll work with it. And we'll, we're, we'll use vice grips, glue, and Hoover belt to well, get. Well, genuine Hoover belt. That's important. <laughs> we're going to put. A we'll attach it right here, so there's another piece of rubber. Uh, and this is what I did on mine, which is the identical same model as this one, to solve the same problem. All right, so let's get to that. This is what I was told by the Hoover store, by the way. This was what Hoover. This is the official Hoover. This fix. was an official Hoover authorized fix. Again, cutbacks. <laughs> well, I mean, this was long after the park was discontinued. I used to be able to buy those little pads and glue them on. How about that? <laughs> Okay, as you see, I've decided to go a little bit further, and I know you guys are used to me doing this all on tape, uh, but because my friend's here, and we're talking and chit-chatting, this is taking longer, so I, that's why you're not going to see it. So I wanted to show you what we did here, and I'll do a, more of a straight-through when we're putting it back together. But we can see that I took the orange gunk and scraped it off that, and that's where formally we're going to put that belt. <laughs> yeah, formerly red, orange... Real nasty. Feels like uh, like dried soda or something. Yeah, um, that stuff really we, We'll adjust this one and put it back together. We're actually going to wash this part by hand. Um, Just because it's too big to fit in the dishwasher. Too big. We don't feel like taking Yeah, it. I don't want to put the handle in the dishwasher either, but we're going to put everything else in the dishwasher. Now, what's cool about this is this is the service sticker from a place that went out of business where I used to work, where this was traded in, and they were throwing this out, and that's where I saved this from in Albuquerque. And we can see... Uh, the serial number 00, is that 1980 or would that be, uh, uh, what's the serial number of the full thing? Or would I that be, know. uh, 1990? No, not 90. No, 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 no. no. It'd be 80. Yeah, yeah, it's closer to 80. 78 or 9 is when this model came out. And because you have the actual blue housing with yeah, the blue, housing blue was button yeah. up here, it tells me it's one of the earlier, before they went to white with a red button. Yeah, yeah, uh. So this gasket is going to get cleaned off, and then we're going to soak this gasket in uh, some furniture polish. We've taken off these. These come off kind of like a... These are clamshell. And these come off kind of like Deconia. In fact, that's probably where they got the idea No, no, from. they did. They did. It's a you know, great thing. We've pulled off the frame and the self-propel right here. Despite it looking way different, the way this machine handle mechanism moved was this uh, is the same as the Hoover the Taconi and machine. It, it's very similar to the Hoover wind tunnel they did not go with the same floating nozzle design though yeah I think the floating nozzle design is actually like one of the pluses of the Hoover wind tunnel in this I think it really helped it make good contact with the carpet it, although it did enable it to chatter when you go against the yeah uh, it could it could chatter yeah uh, carpet uh, with a very stiff grain to it so on camera I want to break apart the motor and the motor has a metal chamber on this side it's a polymer on this side we have some aluminum tape holding it together very strange on um, this fan I'm going to give you guys a good insight to this fan because uh, these fans despite being a direct air machine this gets about like 45 50 inches of water and suction uh, just we'll put. I, I don't know how we could put the working water lift gauge on this, but we will. I don't think, I don't know. We might have to chamois up way because I would like to know. Um, so we're gonna break this apart yeah, because right. this has uh, needle bearings, which help kind of make it last longer, I think, than ball bearings. But they did get noisy fast. They that did was the, noisy. There was a downside yeah, yeah. to that. But so we're gonna pull the carbon brushes off, pull this black cover off, real quick on camera, and. Uh, you know, because this is a pretty worn-in machine, I just want to make sure I'm not... Oh, I don't usually go that far. I'm going to do that with this because this is kind of a baby... This is like a machine you I You can't really put like. those carbons in backwards. Oh, you can't? All right. They, they go in... They touch the commutator in an angle, I believe. All right. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yep. All right, they do. They're, they're going to do it. All right, I wasn't, wasn't sure. 
It has been so long. You can yeah. see my commentator. We'll have to blow this out with the compressed air and get this thing really yeah, clean. For sure. Normally, I put the motors in the dishwasher. The way this motor is made, it's kind of a pain to break down much farther than we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, we could take the whole thing apart, but I just don't feel the need. Yeah. What we want to address is in there to make it a little quieter. Yeah, so we're going to take that apart. I, no, I think you could switch these up. You could put one on the other side of the yeah, motor, but yeah, that wouldn't change anything. I mean, well... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the wiring might be the... All right, does this rubber gasket have to come No, off? no. Oh, what good. you need to do is take the two the screws, screws out. screws out? Are they really, really long? Um, these are some long... I don't know. Yeah, they are. Probably. <laughs> That's why we're using the drill. <laughs> Probably some long screws, you know. All right, so this is filthy. Oh, filthy, filthy, filthy. Filthy. Uh, let me grab the screws out. Set the screws aside for a second. So to show you what that looks like. And we're going to use, of course, central vac. Well, nothing like a set of sweeping flaps. What is that? That is a What's spider egg nest. Yeah. yeah. Some spider egg nest. How about that? There's some breeding going on. There's some breeding going on. <laughs> Greggy, I'm gonna get demonetized on YouTube. Hey, what? That's what it is. The spiders are breeding in your mother. Greggy, that's not politically correct. You heard everybody's feelings. But they they settled down and started a family. Got the silver gender. We did. We just said that. You have to ask the call now because your heads are hurt. This thing. Good thing we're good, good thing you decided to. Yeah, good thing I, we weren't. I wasn't originally going to go this far, but I think th this is really necessary. Yeah, I've never gone this far on one for a customer, not even <laughs> for myself. The things we don't do for customers that we're going to do for ourselves today, and for you YouTube viewers. Which, by the way, if you haven't gone to our Instagram and Patreon and checked that out, you definitely should. We so a... we're going to zoom in here, and I'm going to show these needle bearings and what they look like. And then we're going to stick a Q-tip in there. Also, a roller bearing. I've Is always... More... I've always... I don't know. I've heard both uh, terms used. Alright. So, if we look in here, you can see the needle bearings in there. What we're going to do is we're going to take this. We are just going to clean this and get the schmutz out of there. Wow. Roller bearings like that excel at taking forces that pull, you know, uh, yeah. lateral, am I using my terms right? So the wow. belt tension pulling sideways on the shaft, the needle bearings are very uh, very good at taking up those kind of forces. Yeah, it's they're, they're it's a very appropriate bearing yeah, for this yeah. application. I've, I've often thought actually needle bearings might be better in a brush roller. I, I kind of agree. Uh, so I, I was... I really thought some of the weaker parts on some vacuums usually are the bearings. Oftentimes, well, in motors, other than carbon brushes, they are the thing that goes. Yeah. Uh, in a good, well-made motor, yeah. the bearings will go out before the thing will burn up. Uh, this bearing doesn't come out of here easily, otherwise I would put this whole black thing in the dishwasher. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're going to do that. Yeah, you can see where the bearings is kind of starting to melt. Some of it right there, just where it got a little too hot. But we're going to put a little bit of grease in there, get that. We're also going to clean this. If you look at the shaft, it's just filthy. Because unlike a, unlike a uh, uh, typical bearing people are familiar with, the actual shaft is riding on the bearing rollers. Yeah, yeah there's not like a race. Yeah, the so shaft is the, the race. race. Yeah. Uh, because those bearings are designed for the shaft to be able to slide uh, in, you know, in and out. 
Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to figure out a way of cleaning this commentator off, too. Really? I think that's I'm gonna not a problem. I'm going to blow this all out with compressed air. Don't do anything to the commutator. Unless there's a problem, you don't need to clean them. All right, you heard it. Now, the other thing that's going on right here that could get lost is there are two springs here holding pressure on this, which help hold pressure on these screws and keep everything all together very nicely. You know, I know I was trying to discourage you from doing it. I'm almost wondering if we should just finish taking the motor apart and dishwasher the housing. Dishwasher the housing? I can't dishwasher this part because of the bearing is it's pressed through. It's molded in there. The bearing is fucking molded in there the way this is made. Yeah, it's very cool. Very nice. Very high tech for late seventies tech. Oh well, there was a time when Hoover yeah. was one of the prime innovators yeah, in this industry. Is uh, the glass-filled resins and some of those plastic. There's just so many cool things going on. This was on. an excellent vacuum for its day. I mean, it was hard to beat. I guess I can pull that apart and wash the fan. I feel like we might as well. We might as point. well. So, <laughs> today on Performance Reviews, we just start taking everything <laughs> apart. Spontaneous construction. So, usually you see me very meticulously. I know what I'm going to do. Flying by the seats of our pants. This, tonight. Yeah, today we're just gonna go all out. And you know what's really funny about this? I'm pulling out my metric sockets. This is gonna be SAE. Well, for sure. <laughs> uh, which is really weird for me because I just don't. Well, there were cars at this era that were made American, made, Ma made in America that used uh, metric. metric. Yeah, so yeah. Well, shockingly, most people don't know that. Yeah, they think no. metric is a recent thing here, but it's not. No, metric bolts make. But, speaking of metric, it's not SA. Oh, those. No, wait, I'm a tard. I'm using my metrics. Oh. My other metrics. My goodness, uh, Rachel <laughs> Louise. So I have several sets of sockets, but I don't have very many non metric sockets, so. He's very disorganized with some things. Yeah, with this sort of thing. Don't blame me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know why it would be my fault. It is your fault, Reggie. Everything is your fault, Reggie. I know. I've... All right. Which way is this? Is this a reversed one? Yeah. Well, it's gonna go here. Let me see the fan. It's gonna loosen this way. All right. The reversed. Love that. Just like an orc or something. Up oh, there you go. Oh, there you are can the tell springs. because the the, the the nuts always. Undo the way if you're holding the fan, the blades are you're not in the camera, Reggie. Okay. Let me zoom out and you can yeah. Let's, All right. So, so do your explanation on that cuz let's, let's let's have this nice view before we right, do so an explanation. All right. Okay. These nuts always loosen with the fan fins turning this way. Whether the fans point this way, it's the non-digging into your finger way. When you tighten them, it you tighten it on dig into your finger direction. That's how I remember I just gotta remember which machines do which. In other words, <laughs> no, I, I just look at the fan and I know. Um, and this is the most peculiar little bolt on here. So they even like, when they made this bolt, they even made this bolt so that it's a little bit more aerodynamic, if you would. Uh, oh, there we go. And let's see if we have a mystery order. So, so far, just to put this on camera, the order, we took this off. We had said thing, the fiber washer was under the fan, with the fan, and then I think there's another washer, oh, those two washers, that's why we're doing this, because, alright, and then this just pulls out, we have the fan housing with the bearing, that is riveted in, there are some things on this machine that are just riveted in. So I'd imagine there was a back shop at one point, because I see a part number here, that this was in a stock assembly. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the metal, I love that metal housing, that's just too cool, they just don't do that anymore. And we'll see how thick the plastic is on this. Yeah, you can these see things these really things are break. like a sanitary base, and uh, like the way well, it's Well, actually it's thicker than that. Yeah, it might I would say this is this more tape. durable than a sanitary. Oh yeah, for this is a very durable machine, that's why they made the Conquest with the same motor. Well, there were slight modifications, like they did not use a needle bearing on the other end. It used a ball bearing in there. Yeah, but it was the same sort of design. Cause this is yeah, same, same, essentially this the same This is pretty mode. good. This is like a, a portion of 911. It's good. Yes. Uh, it is a good American design back when we had that sort of thing going on. So we're going to 
now that this... And you can tell there's some inspiration on the Elite motor with some of yeah, these parts Yeah, but the well. Elite motor, they made the fan... Well, they this cheapened. gap between the fan was too close. Kind of like... Because I've accidentally picked up some fairly close. large things with my concept, and I, there's yeah. times where I cringed and thought it broke. We used the concept at the... It was one of the shop vacs that we used at Anderson's to vacuum daily with. Yeah, I'm sure you um, picked up screws yeah, daily stuff. with the stupid thing. Yeah, so this is... We tried to kill it. I never could kill that machine. <laughs> this, this commentator is really... Com commentator, we got the fields pretty good. Things just hefty and well-made. All right, so we're going to put this whole thing, we're going to wash this and get back. All right, everything's come out of the dishwasher, super clean. Pulling out of the dishwasher. Uh, so now the, I actually, uh, I'm going to start rebuilding the bearings in here. And when I say rebuilding, that's kind of a loose term, what we're doing. So we're just going to throw some grease. I'm using Tri-Flow grease. It's my favorite grease to use for a bearing grease, but you pick your favorite bearing grease and use that. Uh, I also just quickly blew out this since it went in the dishwasher just with an aerosol just to make sure to displace all the water properly. Then we're going to flex fix. We'll use this tape in place of this aluminum tape. Uh, for the seal of the motor, I'll explain that in a second. But first, let's just get the rest of this grease in. And I'm going to probably overpack these bearings just just because. I'm uh, sure every time I've packed a bearing, I've overpacked it. Myself. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see when we put back together what kind of. Uh, thanks for grabbing that, by the way, Reggie. Uh, oh, we need it. We'll see when we put back together how much noise reduction this does, if any. Because uh, this is a loud machine. Well, it should run a little smoother. Yeah. It's still going to be loud, but it, it, there will be a should be a noticeable improvement. Because that, that needle bearing was pretty dry. Yeah. Gunky. Yeah. So there, there we go. You can see it's greased up, and now we're going to grab uh, the bearing seal. Which I, think I, threw. Uh, I did a touch. Uh, I threw it right here. And I've cleaned this off. We're just going to put this back in. Um, again, I'm a big fan of just using a screwdriver. You don't want to bend the seal because it's it's a rubber mold with it's like metal with rubber molded yeah, it's on it. Super thin little metal washer. They're not heat treated, no. so they bend super easy. And really, it's just there to give it a little bit of it's, rigidity and not just be a flappy rubber piece. Yeah, so the rubber doesn't grind up in there. But these days, I don't know why they haven't switched to like a piece of Teflon or something. A lot of them are metal, actually. They switched just to 100% metal, and I, I, I don't like the because you can't pry them out. You can't. Gently yeah, you can't repack. Uh, yeah, them. you can't repack the metal ones. So I do that. Put it. Make sure it's in the seal all the way. Just with the back side of the motor, real quick. Just turn that. It's smooth as a baby's ass. Yeah, it is. It's in there. And I'm not going to pack this side. This side's not going to come out because of the plastic molding. Well, the grease will distribute yeah. throughout the whole thing anyway. So yeah, you, you can see that this sides. has had some nicks in here. And this is after the dishwasher. That's these, but this is this is pretty thick polymer. So yeah, no, they they actually did a good job choosing materials and design. They really it. did. So this extra ridge around here gave it even. Yeah, th this, this is stuff, really th that's thicker than a th sanitary base. Yeah, yeah, this is. To give you an idea, here's a number five screwdriver, and you can see just how thick that is in comparison. It's it's about as thick, if not thick, slightly thicker. Very um, durable. Yeah, these, these are... Plastic doesn't have to be cheap, flimsy, or fragile. I hate that when people say, oh, it's plastic, therefore it's cheap. It yeah, plastic is fine when used appropriately. When the, yeah, when the appropriate grade of plastic is used in the appropriate way, it can be more durable than metal. And the U.S. military just chose a polymer-framed pistol, so it can't all be bad. <laughs> no, it, like I said, given the appropriate materials choice and material, you know, design yeah. of the part, plastic can be stronger yeah. than metal. And with the needle bearing, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the race that holds the needles, uh, or the roller bearings in there, and just make sure we're working the grease in there, just by hand real quick. Alright, so there's, again, we're using a little bit of excess amounts of grease just in this situation since it was 
uh, just put into a dishwasher. And it actually came out fairly dry. Almost everything is 100% dry. That's because you use jet uh, dry in your dishwasher. The only thing that wasn't dry is the, the case drum, but that's, that's fine. And then uh, the bag we put in the Speed Queen. With a few extra rags. Anytime you put something like a vinyl bag or any even a regular yeah. bag, you always want to have like some extra stuff for it to tumble yeah, with. So that's, that's super clean. And the, the smells, smells really yeah, good. everything smells super fresh, super clean. You're gonna have, and a, it's gonna smell great when I put it back together. I know that seems silly, but it, it really is good. You might but, actually want to use this for a month. I, well, <laughs> I do want to use it for a month. It just the self propelled needed adjustment, and that led to this. We Which like, it needed. It needed. I think yeah. you'll have a much better experience. Yeah, you'll enjoy um, it more. I blew this out with compressed air off camera, and this out. I decided not to wash these in the dishwasher. Even though it would not have it, caused it wouldn't any harm. Have caused any harm. It would have just led to additional drying time. I am going to real quickly oh, I can grab my toothbrush. I am going to real quickly just with the toothbrush just make sure any hair or anything else is in and out of this. I'm going to start preparing this for assembly here. Yeah, the screw, I left them all in the order they go in. Alright, I wasn't getting that far. You grabbing the springs? Yeah. Do you think the springs should be lubricated? No. I do. You do? Oh, Where's yeah. the other? I, oh, you, you grabbed it right off there. I didn't see All right, it. so we're going to lubricate some, we're going to over lubricate some parts. I'm going to explain the theory of this. Oh, I get and the it's theory. strictly, yeah. I always lubricate where the nuts go on. I do too. But where things slide in because I find it makes assembly easier and it also makes it easier, yeah. you know, should you ever have to take it apart in the future. In this case, I'm doing almost a little excess because there's some rust starting there. I would have wire wheeled that, but... I don't want to wire wheel that because it will get off balance. I've never had that. I'm, I'm so anal about things being balanced, I'm just... I would not wire wheel where the needle bearing rides, but I... There's you don't no get bearing aggressive with it, there. you just kind of polish, but well, it sits in a bearing there. No, it sits in the bearing up there, there, yeah, so that's literally, I'm just going to, and call it good. Because it's, if it lasted this long, it'll last as long as I need it to. That's true. Like that, um, I mean, and my carbon light, the carbon brush life is Looks quite excellent on those. Those had good. These motors oh, did mean, have very good carbon brush life. And if I if I brag myself, you can see how little is actually worn on this. It's just great. It's just great quality. So there's a chance those have been replaced in the past. Too. There is a chance, I, but I don't know. It's I doubt it. And Reggie says he doesn't like to clean commentators off. You can wipe it like that, but I don't. And there's like no to... oil, by the way, involved here, of course. Well, my theory on those, and as it's been explained by more experienced people than I am, that, you know, because the commutator, once used, will turn black. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's and being... carbon all the time. It's carbon dust. It gets embedded into the surface. And that's okay. Um, and you don't necessarily, you can overclean it. it. You can cause more problems by yeah, trying yeah, to Yeah, yeah, I would say it. if I put, I wouldn't tell a new tech to use the commutator. That's kind of a thing I've... Oryx says to do it every time you service, so that's where the... You know what, and I, I don't think I've ever done it on Oryx. That's, yeah, that's, that's really... They just want you to fry your motors sooner so you trade the damn thing. They could, that could very I well be know. with Oryx, you know. I don't know. Alright, so let's put this I would together. disregard that instruction from Oryx and, and only touch the commutator if you have a reason. The, those seating sticks are not for polishing the commutator, they are for seating new brushes to the shape of your commutator. All right, and a, totally different thing. Anyway, totally anyways, different. What, he, what he's talking about are these things. They have a very good purpose, but okay. they're not for polishing computers. All right, we got. I still don't remember the fucking order of this. I hope I got it right. All right, let's see here. I'm um, here. We got. You, you, make sure we put this in right. I have this slightly figured out. Hang on. All right. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with TriFlow, it's kosher. It's kosher? Does it actually say? Yeah, yeah it actually says it. It's actually kosher, dude. Why do you think I use it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that mattered for non-food items. 
Well, they use it to lubricate meat grinders. Oh, well, pardon that's me. Why, that's why it's kosher. I have no idea. Magenta. I have no idea. Why well, no idea they use that on meat grinders? I mean, goodness um, sakes. I think it has to go the other way. I don't know, go this way. No, I mean, I think that... Yep. Oh, I think you've got literally... this in wrong. I think you literally need to do that. <laughs> fucking me up. So it fits. And then the... They were out. Were under here. Yeah, they go on those. I almost feel like that was done there the opposite way. Wait, this will be marks from the spring. No, no, it's it. I I, I confirm. This side goes up. This side goes up. So where was this stuff leaning out then? There's, oh, see, is this, it, this those, those, those wires did not go out that way. Oh, no. they don't go out that way. They go out. I, don't know. I believe that this. This is, order kind of makes a difference. Kind of. Well, yes and no. What matters is you just have the the, the right brushes going to the right well, side. All that's over, all right. Which is yeah, sort of. So we got the we got the springs out. Yeah. Yeah. The springs are a really cool detail. It's to help cushion vibration. Yeah, that's why I said it's a cool detail. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say that for their benefit in case they did. Yeah. No one. Right. So these are going to go in, and uh, these are self tapping screws. So when using these, we want to find the thread. We want to find the thread. Instead of cutting a new one and stripping it. Yeah, the so. There we go. You're going to see me doing probably a lot of this stuff by hand because we don't want to misdo it. No, that's in and up is the last thing we want to do. You just feel the tension just right there. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, alcohol on a rag. What we're going to do is we're just going to clean where the belt's going to go. Clean any excess off. Don't want the grease all over the Yeah, the belt. grease gets on the belt game over. <laughs> like, especially this trifle stuff is just going to... Just kick the belt right off. Yeah. Slide all over the place. You don't want Teflon on the belt. No. All right. So, now we got to put... All this stuff back. I would do the carbons first next. Oh, shit. I mean, not that it really matters. No, I think you're right because we don't want the Flapping carbon brushes. Breeze. And I marked one of these red. It was, um. This one's marked red. I don't, I think the dishwasher took my red marking off. But I think this one. I think that's your. Yeah, I think they're all like. Alright. Oh, there's the, oh, the mark. There it is. So you, can, you probably can't see this on camera. The dishwasher took my Sharpie off. Of course it, it did. just basically left a scuff where the Sharpie was. In a slight uh, stain. Yeah. All right. And again, because we don't want to cut the threads, we're going to turn it reverse. All right. Oh, there it is. All right, it's starting to feel like a motor now. Um, this was a really wacky order of things. I think this one was the first one. I think it went. Okay, I see the order of things. Yeah. So it goes thin one, thin metal one, one. metal one, fiber, fiber one. Fan, metal one, nut. Yeah. <clears throat> Just doing this in the right order is pretty important when the fan isn't available. Well, none of these parts are available. Yeah, all this stuff is. Yeah, 
although I'm sure there's a thousand of these up in various I, I Yeah, I'm sure we could probably find this stuff. But still. why why go to the brain damage if you absolutely don't have Um, let's see, I think this is going to be a number six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so having the, by the way, doing this can cause the shaft to expand. If you over torque this, you don't want to undersize the well, screwdriver. Actually, over torquing it can also damage the fan. Yeah. The, you only really want to get it snug, and the way that the whole thing goes, it will it will tighten itself down as tight as it wants to be when you turn the machine on. Yeah. So basically, just snug. I'm actually things. torquing this with the screwdriver end. I'm not torquing this with the. Yeah. Because you don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to crank. You don't want. You don't want to make. Yeah, we don't actually need to crank, crank this off. The ratchet, because you and can I'm, actually damage the fan. I'm just going to dry turn it. Make sure nothing's rubbing. Nothing's rubbing. No. Every oh damn, that feels. That took up almost all the play that was in there. That's so much nicer. I think you'll notice the difference when you turn this thing on. I think on. we will. Um, my silicone. Uh, Tube here. Yeah, yeah. It looks glue. Cool. So this is silicone premium glue. I would put that bead on here. Yeah, that's where it's around. Going. Around there. We're gonna clean around there with uh, alcohol. A prepared surface. Yeah, just to make sure. Just because there's some rust on this from the years. Yeah. We want it sticking to metal, not loose rust. Yeah. And again, the reason we're going to do this, the silicone is it's going to help seal it up. And it's not going to be a sealed system, but it's going to be pretty close, as close as this could get to a sealed system. Put the silicone on here. You're going to put it on there? I was going to put it on there. No, I'm going to put it on there. All right, we'll put it on there. We'll do I mean, not that it really matters. That's how I would do it. You can do it however you wish. Let's hope I have enough. And uh, a friend stopped by and brought me, uh, Thomas had brought me that other brand of, of Oh, yeah. Stuff. If you don't use that, you'd never get the damn thing apart. Yeah, that's part of why we use silicone is for its, its properties of coming off, and it expands and contracts with the vacuum. So that kind of makes it, it's also high, relatively high heat resistant. Uh, yeah. The nice thing is when you want it, it holds on great, and then when you want it or need it to let go, it's it, really yeah. simple to make it let go. Because this obviously you don't want permanently. And it attached. dries really, This the silicone too dries pretty fast. Yeah. Alright. I like silicone based adhesives for this sort of thing. Very convenient. So I'm just going to put two little dabs right there. Hope we're on camera here. Are you going to glue the fill tube in too? Oh, everything's going to get. This is going to be silicone Sally when we're done. Oh, with this. not the silicone Sally! Uh, if anybody's ever seen regular car reviews, uh, he named one of his cars Silicone Sally. God, I named my last transmission job Silicone Sally, but that's a whole frustrating yeah, actually, story. Nobody's of interested difference. in trannies. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Not that kind of training. Training for <laughs> transmission. You guys are not interested in hearing about transmission. <laughs> Although I do leave it rather ambiguous deliberately. Uh, all right. Horrible. So the tape that I have that I would normally use would be this tape, which is a little on the thick side. So I'm not sure. Do we want to use excess and then cut it with yes, a razor blade, you think? Yes, that's your only choice. I usually just, yeah. Well, of course, I'm used to the stuff that has the uh, peel-off backing. So I'll roll out enough, and then I'll just cut it in half. Yeah, oh, I'm, all right, but this you uh, can't do that with. Yeah, I mean, I got some clear tape. I I think they use the high heat aluminum tape for some reason on here. I'm not sure why they use that. Why do you think they use this? It does get fairly warm. Yeah, um, yeah I guess because it, does. it is a fan housing. Now, for those who don't know, the reason that the exhaust on your vacuum is warm is not because the motor's making it warm. It's because the fan, the air going through the fan, creates a lot of friction. Think of like a turbo. Up. You know, yes. And if you're not familiar with turbocharging, I encourage you to go watch a video explaining how turbocharging and forced induction works because yes, it's, there is a replacement for displacement. Moving the air like that, it, um, well, right. one could argue that the best thing is displacement and forced induction combined, but you know. 
I was just making that joke. Because I, I hear, I just, you I hear a guy old guy say that. You're like, there's no guy. replacement for displacement. I think that's really funny. I, I don't really care so how you, you make the horsepower, just do it. So yes, this is dryer tape we're using. Uh, well, that's what it was before. Yeah. The older stuff. The newer dryer tape, I don't know what it's made out of, but it's like fiberglass and... You can still get the aluminum tape. You can. It's more, way more expensive. Yes. It's good. like double or triple what this stuff I have is. Uh, and I'll be honest. You could probably, if you so chose, just slap duct tape. In I yeah, it I really would be a problem. But you know, I really think duct tape would have been almost as appropriate. Yeah. Maybe it's the adhesive on this that makes the difference because the high heat, it's got a higher heat adhesive. Yeah, the, I don't think that duct tape can creep and wander when it gets hot like that. Yeah, it, it really does. And this stuff does not, and that I think is exactly what. So it now is. I've got some excess. We're gonna shoot. Because that was off. the sealant. Technically, you probably didn't even need to bother with the tape. Yeah, after the uh, after the, the tape was the sealant. That was that yeah, was that was perfect. the sealant at the time. See, we're just going to cut off the excess. And somebody's going to be like, you're wasting a lot of tape. I would have gotten the right size tape. Well, I didn't have the right size tape laying around. Well, who wants to go buy a whole roll of right size tape just for this? If I was doing a lot of them, I would. But Yeah, but you're not. This was kind of an impulse of repair. Even if I was doing a lot of them, I'd just get the... And you could send me your va vacuum, folks. I'd be happy to do a beautiful job restoring your vacuum too. We, I do offer that as a service. You can go over to Patreon and check that out. Uh, you know, and send me an email first and I'll tell you parts availability and stuff like that. And I wouldn't be receiving a dime of it, but you bet your ass I'll be butting in on that one. <laughs> Weasel my way in. Alright. But no, so restoring vacuums is fun. Done that. Throw the excess tape away before it wanders up on somewhere I don't want it. All right. Freedom. Wow. So that's all we're going to do the motor. That's all you can do to a motor. Come on now. All right. And yep, turning fan by hand, it is in there, right? Yeah. And then what's put on there afterwards is this. And th this seals like a rubber. Don't forget these two. Yeah, and then we got this. So what we're going to do on these is Reggie is going to move, and we are going to, I'm going to oh, pledge the shit out of them. That'll make everything go together easy, too. So, yeah, I take my seals, and I pledge the shit out of them. It's very, it's good for them. It's, it's every bit as, like, good as doing armor all or something. Armor all works, too. I, like, I find pledge works better than armor all. But, yeah, yeah, I guess it Whatever you have on hand. Speaking of, but I do like this stuff. I've done it with. Uh, I did it with my stretchy hose the other day on my Constellation. Oh, pledged it. Yeah, I finally got a crack going. Oh no. A little crack. It's a shame because it's the original hose. <laughs> um, is it close to one of the ends? It's not. It's so tiny. It's like literally like. But I mean, is it close to one of the ends of the hose? Yeah, it's a couple inches now. Uh, yeah. Worst case scenario, we can shorten the hose a bit. Yeah, but I'm not, I know I put a bunch of pledge in there because it protects it. Also, so that guy goes on also uh, glycerin, the suppository stuff. Reggie, there you go talking to Sabrao. Yeah, I'm gonna get demonetized. No, no, we're not talking about using it like that. It's good for rubber, rubber parts. All right. So that guy was on there. That. That was on there. Yeah. Somewhere. And this is the most overbuilt rubber gasket. Well, hey, this whole machine, to an extent, was overbuilt. Oh wow, that's a shame. It took my uh, my I label knew off. That was going to happen. Oh. Shot so here. what we're doing? Oops. What Reggie just did was he <laughs> lubricated the uh, the, straw the, oil. the uh, spring here. What I've done off camera, since our camera battery, I don't know what it did. Uh, right here, so we've attached a new rubber piece. The genuine Hoover belt. So uh, yes, the genuine Hoover part. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this whole thing on. Yeah. And we cleaned the commentators. Wash the whole thing actually. Right. I think everything except for the cord reel itself. 
I'm not going to leave as much slack as we did when it was coming apart because we want to put a little extra tension on there. How much cord did I have dangling out? Do you remember? I didn't pay attention. I think that's about half of what was sticking out here. So. so usually when I rewind a cord reel, I usually turn it. Which is what I did. Oh, you did it by uh, hand in the back. Right. Well, no, because I, when I took it out, I wrapped the cord all the way around it. I just undid less of it. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense now. Or would, would that be about right, or am I doing this backwards? Hang on. No, that would be right. That would be right. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. I'm Somebody a professional. Somebody here trust is a me. professional. I don't know if I'm coming or going, but trust me. <laughs> Do you remember what screw in there? Um, oh, something to that effect. This one came out of the bottom. Those four came out of the bottom. Uh, I think it was a machine screw. Because we only have one of these, don't we? And it is possible. Yep, that's it. Yep, that's the machine screw. I just looked at the threads. <laughs> yeah, that's always a question is... Which one of the screws is which? All right, now for the official test of everything. Now on mine, all we did was take this apart. I didn't even take the front off. That was before I knew how. Oh, yeah. So I've got the spring here for yeah. that. One of these is probably this spring right here. Yes, it is. So this spring is quite ingeniously put in there. Yeah, they ingeniously riveted the whole thing together. Now what I thought was ingenious is that it doesn't really look like the spring's supposed to go anywhere, but it goes right there. Yeah, that'll create enough friction. So now, that means... No, come, come now. We have to deal with some duct tape. Oh. <laughs> I was like, why is it not working? <laughs> we got we got the we got the tool on there. So we're gonna pull our duct tape off. Normally that's not necessary. Normally there's a second one of those hooks. Yeah. Like this over here. This is the first one I've ever seen. There's some things about this particular one. I'm wondering if maybe yours is earlier than mine. And they started doing I've things. I've looked at the date different. codes and it's really confusing on these older hooks. I don't understand the date codes. Ooh, that's so nice. That's just, it's like fucking I lubricated butter. the whole thing. The spring, the, uh, uh, nope, you're doing it backwards. Yeah, it goes in. Yeah. Why do I think there was more of a... There's no point in putting that in until we're ready to put the back so on. that's, okay. Yeah, because it'll fall right out. All right. All right. So now we have that good, we well, need to go get my wire strippers and strip these off. Well, I would say that we want to do this. You want to do that? Well, yeah. That's why we did this in this order, so we can put this on at this stage. And at this stage, see, I got this little rusty screw here. Oh yeah, it might be easiest to bust it loose. Oh yeah, put some of that on there. We're just going to drop some oil on there, because we're going to have to adjust this here in a minute. Uh, oh, actually, what we do want to do that with oil, just work the oil into the spray. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, whoop, see the excess oil. Bumping and it keeps smacking into you. That extra soil will clean up the rest of the duct tape residue. <laughs> I'm sure it should. Yeah. See, we're environmentalists. We just reuse something. Just want to make sure also that I didn't overdo it anything. Uh, so that the spring doesn't come out, you mean? Yes, we have a spring. You'll be gentle with this. So. I might give it a good yank at the end. Yeah, no, you're not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put red tape on there, last bit of cord, so I know it's one other modification we're gonna do. Oh yeah, we can do that. That's something I do to machines with cord rails when they're not marked. So there's like a pocket right here. Anybody not interested? There's a pocket right here. I don't there's know. like holes that where something could. Like there was gonna be a light or a dirt sensor. Anyways, well, if you want to hire, 
carry handle, or if you want to hide your drugs, that might be a good spot. Not a very uh, convenient spot. Not very convenient, but you're hiding drugs. Come on. True. I mean, if you're going back between, you know, Mexico and the U.S., I'm going to get fucking demonetized. God damn it. We do not condone drug dealing. We do not recommend that you should. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I have these people who comment on my video, they're like, oh, stop cursing, man, stop this, you know, have some class and all that, and I'm all about freedom of expression, freedom of speech. Yeah. yeah. Highest order, snap that in. Uh, so you'll just you'll just see me say whatever I think, and that's that's and gonna would, have to work I until. I've been doing that little bit of screwing at the moment. You mean this bit of screwing? Yeah. All right. That was just put them all in. Black things. Yeah. I just put them all in. I'm just gonna put them all up. Front covers on. I don't think it's coming back off. Is that for the front cover? Yeah. That's what holds that blue piece on. Oh, no. yeah, the snap wasn't sufficient enough. See, if this was a newer vacuum... Oh, that's the only screw that we could put in. Oh. Never mind. All right. The well, other ones that hold that on also hold this thing in place. What's interesting is the cable drive takes a really convoluted route around there. It's not that it's much more straighter on the newer self-propelled machines. The whole mechanism is a bit less uh, involved on the newer ones. Yeah. I think that's going to be a right. Should be. I guess that's one of the easier things to get to. Yes. All right. All together, we're going to put the motor, we're going to rewire everything. Uh, we're going to use the black screws on this, the little light bulbs I'm actually putting in. I didn't take the light bulbs out when I put the, uh, took them off to, for the motor or anything, so. No, there was no need to remove them from the sockets. Yeah, I just hope I didn't touch them or anything, because those are the ones that are sensitive to, uh. All light bulbs. Yeah. Well, Glass is just porous enough. Yeah. I don't know that it... Halogen bulbs are the ones that... Those are halogen, aren't they? No, those are not halogen. Those aren't the halogen? No. The xenon bulbs are little tiny things. Yeah, the xenon ones. That's, that's much newer. Not xenon, xenon. Xenon. You know it sounds like the Church of Scientology when you say it that way. That was Xenu. Xenu. <laughs> oh, uh, God. Not the Scientology. I'm going to get demonetized for sure. I don't uh. think Google likes... Scientologists. I don't know what. It's so blatantly unclear what you can get demonetized for that I'm. I'm through guessing. I'm just gonna say anything. None of my videos are monetized, so it hasn't been a problem I need to concern <laughs> myself with. Well, I am monetized. I know. Uh, not very much. I don't get paid very much, but you know. And Google went months without paying us when they restructured their payment program, which is the real reason they did that, to save money for a few months, if you ask me. Of course. And the Sharpie I use to label this is coming off of my hands. So if you guys think my hands are getting dirty, it's just Sharpie. Oh, they're getting stained in one way or another. I just have my little pill bottle full of wire nuts. As he prepares to enter a conundrum that I don't know if he is prepared for the solution to. What is the conundrum? Oh, it didn't even confound you one bit. Oh, you think I forgot to put that through that little the hole? Yeah, I figured you're going, oh shit, where'd this wire go? <laughs> no. A wiring is never really something it's it's really never that confounded it, me. Yeah, either. no, it's something that's always been confounds my boss. Straightforward, yeah. And I, although, I, although he's gotten a lot better since I've pushed him to figure it out. Yeah, but I've had a lot of comments on my videos, like, uh, like I think I tried did one on how to wire up a TriStar cord, and somebody was like, "We went by that way too fast." And I guess to me, it just is simple stuff, uh, yeah. wiring. And we're gonna, just, I'll just zoom in on the wiring order for everybody to look at right here. And I'm going to secure all these wire nuts with a little bit of electrical tape because this thing vibrates in a way that a Hitachi can't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Uh, 
wave of the magic wand. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're not repairing any magic wands. No! That's one thing you cannot send me to repair. I'll not do that. That's next. Next subject. Oh, believe it or not, a vac shop. I read this uh, one time where some guy was talking and he's like, yeah, one of my favorite stories is this guy brought in, a little old man brought in a, a vibrator in a case thing and he's like, oh yeah, my wife's massager. And, and he <laughs> pointed, uh, the, the gist of it was he pointed the poor man to the nearest um, store. And um, said, you know, you'll just have to buy a new one. Those aren't repairable. You know, I had, I remember at high school, uh, maybe I just graduated high school. I was working in the, some lady, really big lady, brings it in, bring one. And uh, she has it in a plastic bag. And I'm like, I'm not even going to touch that. I'm if not, she's carrying it in, in a plastic yeah. bag, what does she expect you yeah, to Yeah, but she, like, she tried to be all innocent about it. I was like, I know exactly what that is. Like, and I, I didn't say it quite like that, but I called her out and said, no, I'm not fixing that. Like, no. Nah. <laughs> That's not a vacuum. We don't have parts. Next subject. I was, I, I, she got real upset about it, too, I remember, and I was just... Why do I feel like this wire is too short? Did we briss something? No. Yes, we did. Oh, dear. What, what happened? Should that be on the other side of the motor? What went wrong? Oh. These wires are too long and these wires are too short. I think we're fine. Ooh. Are we? I think it's just fine, Reggie. Is it are we going to venture a bit that the motor spins backwards when we turn this thing on? Well, no, because there's all the things. Uh, so you think the motor's going to blow out that way, though? No, no, it's not quite. Not I mean, it's safe. all wired up safe if you want to try it. Why not safe? It's just... Hold down. Yeah, we can hold it I'm not going to hold it down. We're going to put the cover on. And so I you're not like my boss? I wouldn't hold it down either. That's why I said the... you're going to hold it down. No, no. And um, you're going to test the cord reel. All right, we're just going to give this a... And it's going to blow shit at you. Oh, hey, get your hand out of the way. I don't know, it's it's turning the right way. I think I just fine. thought we'd maybe put something No, in. I think it's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, something got brisked, but we're all right. No, nothing got brisked wet. Just not in a severe manner. Anyway, we'll gloss right over the mistakes we made. Shimmy right on down the fucking town. There are no mistakes, man. Speak for yourself, that's fine. I am speaking for myself. What Speak are you talking about? Man. I'm fine. the one that's bristed. Oh. Speaking of brish and brishowitz. They even made it so this cover could go on, like, super nice. Yeah. That wire is supposed to... Let's see if we actually. Oh, that's terrible. So what we're going on about is, we think this wire should be somewhere coming else. out the other side of the motor. Yeah, and that kind of would suck. Um. Well, we're going to take that apart and redo it. Anyway, I just saved time off camera. I basically just need to take the motor and flip it 180 where the wires go. Um, so if anybody was really watching that closely, trying to do this at home, first of all, don't do this at home. Take it to a professional. Also, if you do take it to a professional or you're a professional trying to watch this, and it's years in the future and you're trying to fix one of these things or some, some sort of crap like that, Contact uh, a collector. Contact a collector. Don't, I had, don't put that on yet. We're not putting that on yet. Uh, I was just making sure everything oh, was lined up. I was going to say, you got to make sure you But basically, my white wire was a little short because of how it was tangled in there, so we redid that. So Flip the back of the motor 180. Did the, did yeah. the hokey pokey. You just do the That's hokey pokey. That's what it's all about. All right, now can we put that on Reggie again? Um, yeah, now, now, now we can do that. Now. Now we're good. That's capacious. And something that's kind of cool is, kosher. rather than the, the cord wearing, they put this extra piece of plastic to wear and 
kind of reinforce where the cord was going to go. Well, it's a piece of plastic that's a far more friction friendly than the plastic the machines. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little attention to details that were on some of these older machines. Just they just don't do today, unless you're buying a high end. Yeah, machine. and I, I think really, if we were. This machine would have been a thousand dollar plus vacuum today. Well, if you would go back and take the price of one of these, put it in an inflation calculator, it probably would be there. So we're going to put this cover on, and a cover, my cover, just has to be slid into the right place before you put oh, it on. Oh, that's all of these. Is it really those big ass screws? I'm pretty oh, sure it is. Here it is, I think. Might no. Wrong. You're, doing it, you're doing it wrong. I can't. Those big screws go holding this no, on. No, there's, 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 there's four more of them after these three. Those are the wrong threads. See how much bigger those are? Those go right there. Oh, oh, yeah. Oops. That would have been the end of that. Oh, wrist it wide open. Yeah, because there's four of these and three of those. They're the same length, the same thread pitch, but they're bigger diameter. Yeah. And these are kind of like the other ones where they're not self-cutting, they're self-tapping. So you want to same sort of thing. I say that with any screw into plastic. Yeah, any yeah, it's exactly where I was going with that. And this hole was empty. Oh, yes, it was. As much as you want to put things in there, don't put anything in this puka. Um, oh my. I don't even know where to begin with that slide of refrain. Uh, <laughs> actually, the same guy who was not a good person, by the way. Uh, but he was a, a you know a, a long tech, so he had a lot of tricks. But he used to use the word puka all the time to describe a hole. Is this someone we worked with down in New Mexico? Yeah, uh. a certain individual down in New Mexico, uh, <laughs> long time repair guy, used to say that, and I, I just love saying that. It, I, I guess it's like a Hawaiian slanderous word for a hole. You can use your imagination from there, kids. Um, None of that surprises me. Yeah, no, this guy, again, he was not a particularly... Why does none of this surprise me? Yeah. Uh, Alright. Got that made in the USA. I wonder how much of this was globally outsourced at the time, if anything. Not much. No, I don't think so. Maybe like the tape or something like that. <laughs> If even. Yeah, I mean, they were... There was just a lot more dominance of American Yeah, we, we were making a lot more at the time. I, you know, taxes weren't so high. We didn't have quite as much red tape from the government. Yeah, and a lot of things just hadn't happened, you know. Economically, I mean, the Berlin Wall was still up, things like that. We still regarded communism as a threat, which it still is. We're not going to get into anything more tough <laughs> on this channel. <laughs> Though if you want to hear me political rant and want to help me create a political rant channel, please go to Patreon. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, that's on. Um, I kind of want to make this thing stand up before we do any more. Well, that's kind of where we're at. we got to yeah. make it stand up. I mean, I guess you could put the bag on there. Well, you didn't, you didn't clean the... Well, no, why would that be that? You didn't clean the thing yet. You wanted to clean the thing. What thing? That thing. Oh, the transmission. Yeah. I kind of... I think I left one of these upstairs. Did you? Yeah, I'll go and get it. Did you or did you? Know? Or I dropped it. <laughs> we'll go look for it in a minute. So I'm going to put my gloves back on. So Reggie was telling me he wanted to just wash this whole thing as a whole. That's what I do. I mean, and I actually, if I had thought about it, I would have taken the wheels off and put them in the dishwasher. Uh, what wheels off? These guys. Oh. Uh, those guys. I guess they come off easy. Yeah. Uh, you have to have that. You have to have the tool for it, though. Well, I do at work. I don't have one here because. Well, then, good thing you didn't bother thinking about it because it would not happen, sweetheart. Well, I can. I'm pretty good with the screwdriver and a pin on it doing that. I've got my ways. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna do the abridged version, which is just gonna be. Now, Reggie, have you ever opened one of these? Oh no, I have. 
I have opened these. And did you actually, back the real, oh yeah, oh, did it work? Is the real? Yes, it did. Well, nice. I had to have another one to get parts off of though. Oh, goodness. I would have just put another one in it. Uh, that is the short answer of what you should do. That is always what you should do in that situation. But I definitely was bored once and opened up a Hoover wind tunnel one. I think I opened one up once, but then I <coughs> put it back together. I don't even remember what I found when I got in there. Yeah, um, well, there's a couple bearings the same as what they put in the brush roller. Yes! Well, you can see those from the outside. Yeah. Those are uh, one underneath the The um, clutches you pulley. can also see from the outside, which is kind of weird. Yeah. So we're just going to... I'm just wiping off the bag. You can just see what we're... Top. We're just going to clean up as much as we can. This is more of just a sanitization. This is not a... It's a degreaser. Know. And then we'll re-grease some of this. And... How are you going to re-grease any of that? I'll re-grease these. I like to grease this sort of thing. Uh, this little nylon wasn't enough. Just a thin coat of that Teflon grease. Real thin coat. Teflon. Teflon grease works better as grease than it does as a... As a non I agree. As... <laughs> Teflon also makes an excellent coating for your carpet. You know, I think... Uh, my carpet has something like that woven into the fibers because it's got that. The fibers themselves are like not porous, or there's some sort of. No, it gets, it's actually the plastic your fibers are made of. Yeah, it's a kind of something. Because you know, people, I don't know if people realize this, but carpet is plastic. Most carpet is plastic. Some carpet is wool, and. Less of it than you. I mean, it, originally it was all wool. But if you now buy wool carpet today, I, I question why the hell you would do that with all these fantastic fibers. I, I agree. I really would question that. Uh, I'm sure. The fire the comments up. Tell me why you'd buy wool carpet. They Be say actually there is, there is an advantage. They say if properly maintained, it does last longer. I I feel like it's really hard to maintain. I feel like wool carpet always sheds. Customers it who have wool carpet. Shed. No, that is it, a factor. Yeah, that is it a sheds so much more. That I would say, I would. Back when wool carpeting was the standard, vacuum cleaner brush rolls looked very different. Yes, yes. They had very soft bristles and beater bars. Just like uh, we took a look at some of those at the Denver Vacuum Museum. Oh, in other words, my. But which Reggie is the fire. curator of. Yeah, uh, the hoarder of the, the hoarder of the, of the Denver Vacuum Museum. But you can see some of the earlier vacuums yes. that I've done videos on. You can on. see the difference in the. Whereas by the time we had the plastic carpet, we realized that doing away with the beater bars and going with stiffer bristles offered better results in the grooming and overall cleaning. Yeah. That's why the change in brush roll design and the elimination of beater bars. Carpet, carpet construction, carpet materials changed, and the vacuums had to as well. Yeah, the vacuums changed with it, so that's something... Yeah, because, you know, the point of the vacuum is to clean the carpet, so as the carpet changes, it only makes sense that yeah. the, the vacuum cleaner must change with it. I think one thing I noticed when I used uh, that Kirby is just how much it didn't clean. So I'm curious to see if I'm going to get the same results with this, because this is a more powerful vacuum. I will, I've always felt these things cleaned insanely well. But That's how I've always felt that they clean well, but we're going to, I'm really going to put that to test. So you can see that this maybe is a newer one because it has that Teflon bearing cover that the newer bearings had. Um, that that right uh, bearing style came out before or about the time these were introduced. Okay. No concept ever had the um, metal cap and felt uh, okay. uh, seal thing. So the reason I was just pulling that off was to clean it and possibly, I'm going to just hit it with the rubber hammer real quick, see if it comes loose. Nope. I was hoping that would come dislodged. Uh, so there's, there is not a bearing, this is not a sealed bearing. That was a Hoover trademark for a while. We'll explore that more in the brush roller. Um, but that was a really weird thing Hoover used to do on all their machines. And it wasn't really until TTI took over Hoover that they started sealing bearings uh, properly. Well, they just switched bearings to... Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get in there. So just to moisten it up. I don't know what was so funny about that. He's off in the corner crying now. <laughs> Sorry. 
My mind is below the gutter. It's down in the sewer. <laughs> Reggie, I can't do anything with you. This is why we can't have nice things. I know it. <laughs> what a dirty, rotten shame I am. Alright, so that... We'll just do that. This is, again, one of those things you don't need to really overly torque. Uh... I kind of want to pull this side off, but again, it's difficult, so we're just going to shoot it with a little bit of a Teflon in there. Wipe off the excess. I've personally never had anything good come of trying to mess with those nuts and take that stuff Well, apart. I, I was more cleaning out if I could. I, uh, I again, if it, the gearing in here I wouldn't clean. And uh, I think the plastic housing was a perfect material for this. I think there's it was no that reason. same fiber. It was that yeah, same. Yeah, they, they went to this kind of material on these. Well, how it how that progressed is first off, see this, these early ones were all metal. Yeah. First thing to to not be metal were these two side pieces. Yeah. And the center piece remained metal. Um, I think that this plastic over here is every bit as strong never, and rigid as the aluminum. Yeah, I've never had. The metal, the plastic body ever break? I've had the like gears and stuff strip, but never really anything else. Everything else has always been super solid. Usually, I find that the only times I've ever seen a transmission go bad, I guess I've seen some where they just quit. Usually, the clutches wear out or get yeah, the clutches somehow. usually are what burns up. I think I'm gonna need to get me a scrubby pad. Oh, probably for that. That is pretty caked on there. Yeah, we'll we'll do that a little bit later. True, you can do that, can do that with the machine all together. Yeah, I was just trying to wipe off as much as the the harder to get to. Yeah, parts. I just take this thing over the sink, spray it down with cleaner. I have trouble brush. doing that with a gearbox. I have trouble exposing water to a gearbox in my head. You just have to be careful with how you do it. But I do not fill the thing full of water. Again, I would do it with a Hoover wind tunnel. <laughs> But I'm not going to do it with that. I've done that. it on these multiple times. Sometimes if I'm not going to take it apart, I'll leave all this on the machine. I'll take the hood off and I'll just take this whole thing, hang it over the sink, and wash it. I know I'm going to, yeah, they're going to think I'm not. Well, oh, you are not, so that's all right. <laughs> just going to vacuum out the rest of that. done that and one thing we are just going to grease it a little bit here just a little light coating and the, again maybe if it was a new one put a few drops on this pivot point you put a few drops on that pivot point yeah maybe down there oh yeah of course and that's because what will happen with these and you can see this one's already started is the this will start to wear down this metal thing because it's metal on metal and yeah, I did the same thing there. Oops. So the very, with towel. very little, uh, don't forget to bring a towel. Um, very oh, little yeah, grease. Towels are important, but that's not where I was going with that. Uh, I was trying there. to do a Donald Duck. <laughs> Alright. So once that's all together, you got to kind of manhandle it to the side. That's sexist. Damn it, I'm gonna get demonetized again. <laughs> well, if you think that term is sexist, you guys can comment below. <laughs> if anybody's even made it this far into this horribly long video... Any, anybody who's put up with me through this horribly long video... Yeah. Oh. Um, and it looks like there was originally some Loctite on here, as well as... Um, this lock washer, but I, I think I think the lock washer with the proper amount of torque. And when you put this on, it's kind of like a lug nut. You want to make sure. You kind of want to do that with anything. You want to put the opposite screw and make sure everything's lined up before you start tightening things down. 
Unless it's a Nord lock, lock washers don't do much. At least so say the experts. I don't I'm not an expert. Is the Nord lock the kind that has like the plastic inside it? No! The Nord lock is the two piece lock washer. Like where there's two washers that sort of interact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making sure everything has torque still. Gutentight. The German specs Gutentight. Ja, das ist Gutentight. Everything seems to be good. I said this machine was made in the U.S. That's partially why the transmission is so dirty, though. Is this is the leftover grease from some other tech spork or possibly original. It's really hard to say. These machines, again, they just lasted. All right, so now the machine's still not going to lock up right this without the spring. Ten years older than I am. Yeah. So it's got dual springs, dual pedals. Oh, well, there's um, nowhere to hook that spring to yet. It goes in this hole no. here. That, there's no, no, no. It goes into. Um, oh, pulls on this thing. I think on this side. Nope. Other side. Okay. So we got this thing to put on. Oh, you're right about that. And then the springs. And um, because it's an older machine, we did kind of grease this a little bit. Um, you might not need to. Rotating these might be enough, but just basically just a lack of material. So when you put this on, it's like a puzzle piece. There's a certain way you line everything up when you do it. I am fumbling this. Red is sitting over you here. Are. I'm grimacing. He's watching me. He's, he's, he's sitting over here fucking just making like, these all. This yeah, amateur. It's amateur out. Well, know, it's the follow. angle you're trying to do it at for the camera that's really good. Yeah. Giving you uh, I'm voice. really trying to do this so you guys can see what we're doing. Actually, we might not be able to do it. Like that. No. No, because see what, what's happening. Yeah, those things are dangling up. It's so much easier if you do it flat. Show me what you're talking about. Mr. Show Backmaster. me what you're working with. So that's the proper way to do it. Again, I was trying to make it easy so you guys could see why I did it, but that's the easy that's, way. To that's do the it. proper way to do it. I don't know what proper it's the easy. I've had people get mad at me and tell me I make this stuff look too easy. I'm sure they said the same to you. Okay. All right. you. You get the idea. Oh, you get the idea now. This is the easier side because it's not attached to do it. Then now everything lines up with that dimple. Notice this side's riveted. Yes. And now... That side has got screws on it specifically for the purposes of taking it apart. No. These these two are what hold the bag bottom in. Nope, nope, no. Nope, nope. It's these three. Oh, three black ones? Yep. Wow. Oh, trying to remember. Between, it takes two of us to remember these screws. Because unlike a Kirby that I have all those screws completely memorized, these you so rarely see. And now we were talking about it that well, neither of us have serviced this were in a black. long time. Some of those were silver screws in there. So you probably saw plenty that were silver just like these. Yeah, so but that's kind of... Again, you want to reverse these and be gentle with these because these are old. I don't want to make anything break. There are no parts available for this. Outside. Unless you find it used yeah. junk machines. Wow, this, this housing really... This housing really cleaned up. It looks oh, pretty fucking new. I love the way that you... I love how you can see the glass fibers. You can yeah. actually feel them. Feel them. There's a part number molded in here. And who ever stopped doing that? I don't know why more companies just don't put the fucking part number molded in the thing. You know, it just it helps everybody out. Um, so now is we're gonna look at springs. Oh, the springs that lock the back. And again, this is like a different kind of plastic, maybe even Teflon or something. Delrin, maybe. Delron. That's probably what it is. All right, so. A spring. There's two positions for the spring. 
I'm going to use the further one. No. Compensate for clapitation. Yeah, for it just being a little bit older. And if you have a spring tool, this is the time to use it. I find mini pliers do very well. How about my fat fingers? And they're actually supposed to come and hook from under. It doesn't really matter. But from the factory, they hooked from underneath. I just considered it a challenge to figure out how to get those things in there like that. But. So, one thing you don't want to do is do this with gloves at this point. See, I wear my gloves a lot tighter than he does. My fingers are pretty long. I can't wear the tight gloves. My, eh, eh. I wear gloves uh, that are actually are, a size too small for me I and they go on do, skin tight. I know you're supposed to do that. I can never do that. My fingers are too long. It doesn't work. I'm going to have a bad time. So he was going on about it doing that way is the factory, uh, the right way. You know the foam is even revamped. It's yeah. even fluffier yet. Once you clean it and get all the crud out of the pores of it, yeah, and it's... So you can see where the this happened. Now, Reggie, what would you think about putting some grease there? I was actually about to say, you might as well put a little smear well of slop. grease on that because it pivots, that. that pivots as much as anything in the... I'm going to smear some grease on here. A light smear. It'll just make it easier on the seal and so forth inside. Yeah, and the, again, because plastic is literally worn off, Let's give it a better seal. Better seal, just a little extra. Since this was like a one year service on a machine, you wouldn't do some of these things. And that's what's just kind of so cool. It's just going to show us, because it's one of my favorite things, is that this is clear. So you could see if there was a clog, and it rotated up on the bottom so the customer could get in there by themselves and kind of unclog it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, thing. that's exactly what the purpose of that was, a clean out port. Yeah, and it, you do, to completely remove it, you do have to have the lid off, but it's still very, very cool. Yeah. Speaking of lids, show you just how clean this got. Oh, yeah. Uh, from the dishwasher by itself. Dishwashing this stuff. Yeah, so if you don't have a dishwasher, you should consider getting one to work on vacuums. And if your shop is too uptight financially for that, you should consider a different business model. Ah, well, that's um, a good thing. Because you'd save so much time and be able to do, be so much more productive, especially if you're like a one or a two man shop, especially like a little orc store or something where you don't have, you know, the, the room. All right, consider a different business model. Just tell it like it is. Yeah, don't don't get me started with business and saving money. And I'll, there's some things. There are places to save money and places that are not to save money. Sometimes you got to spend money to truly save money. That is so true. PB Swiss screwdriver is a great example of that. Oh, God bless. All right. Did you bring down your screwdriver yet? Right. So this is the screw that was stuck right here, and I should have done something with this to clean it out more. So again, we're going to have to pick it out and clean this debris that's been stuck in here for however many years. So the screwdriver engages properly. So now the screwdriver will actually fit in there and engage. Again, this was really meant to be worked on. So a lot of these screws just come out. Disposable vacuums were just becoming well, a thing. And this was a very expensive machine. Yeah, this was a high-end machine for Hoover. This was they a were flagship popular. vacuum. A lot of people bought them because of how good they were. But they and this were is back not when cheap. box stores actually like sold you something. Monkey Awards would have actually had somebody there selling it to you. Somebody's gonna comment that Hoover was never sold in Monkey Awards or something like that, but they you get were. the point. They were. In fact, I have. A Montgomery Ward labeled convertible. That would be kind of cool to see. Yeah, I actually All dug right. it out of the trash around here. So, 
you can Gears see we're mostly back together. We're going to talk about the brush roller a little bit. Because uh, I'm sure somebody's going to ask, why the hell does the brush roller have two different color bristles? Well, it didn't come like that. In fact, uh, if you look here, the reasoning for that is I only I used my last set of brush, brush strips in this vacuum. And I only had, I didn't have a pair, I just had the one set. Uh, so, that's why. Now, normally if we were putting in the dishwasher, I'd put the brush roller in the dishwasher. This brush roller has been wire brushed and cleaned up and... Actually, that's the original chrome finish. I brushed, wire brushed it. Oh. But I mean, that At is... At some point, yeah. It, it was originally chrome. It was never yeah. painted. This one was never a gray painted one. No, this one was not. These these earlier ones like this one came with chrome brushes. Yeah. The painted thing was later. I have no problem with painted brush roller. I prefer the chrome. Hell, I think they should make them out of just solid stainless. I think that would be a bit obsessive. I, I really like the resin fill brush rollers, I really think. Okay, so I'm just going to pull the end off, and you're going to see that there are more modern bearings in here. You're going to see that there's some grease in there, because I... At one time, put repack these bearings when I rebuilt this. So really, we just should check for hair in this one. And if the so fine art to repacking those bearings is to get it done with just enough grease that won't come out. So Hoover actually had a tool for that. And I had a grease gun. I dessert. find the tool messy. I it is super messy, but I. I I prefer to take that white end off the brush or off the bearing and take a small grease gun and just pour it over. Something I see a lot of people struggle with are new techs. Uh, well, not anymore because the new techs don't really no more. have to deal with this, but the order of the brush roller bearings and stuff was an issue at one yeah, point. Yeah, I really struggle with it now because they never see this. They've never seen anything like this, so I think it's kind of important for me to show me doing this. Uh, if you're wondering why you're seeing this level of detail on the vacuum, I never pull brush roller bearings apart in any of my videos because uh, the service procedure never calls for it now, but this is back in time. Again, talking about that exposed bearing, Hoover didn't use sealed bearings. Uh, until TTI came along. Maytag used these same open bearings, which were just horrible. <laughs> horrible solution. For their time, they were alright, but we've progressed. I think in the 40s and 50s, come 1960s, I think this was unacceptable, personally. Come 70s and 80s, like, what the hell, but they used these well into the late 2000s. I would say it was acceptable up into the 60s. I don't know. I they didn't no have sealed bearings the way we know them with the rubber neoprene yeah, seals. That's up what I'm until saying. About the ah, late '70s, I want to say. I could be wrong. So you're just gonna see me, real quick. We're just gonna clean these out, and they are eccentric. This is probably gonna be real boring for some folks, but it needs to be done. It's just because again, you can see what just builds up on there. It's just, just horrendous. And it used to be every Hoover that came in for 28 bucks we'd do this. 28 bucks, my goodness. Yeah, well, it was 28 bucks. It was a standard labor fee. You'd get, you'd get yourself a belt, a bag. We'd polish it up, clean it up real well. Uh, we'd charge it double that. We would if there was something really wrong with it, but... Finally, we started up charging for bagless machines were $39 or something, $38. Bucks. Uh, and then Dyson's was what really when bagless machines we started up charging because those were more expensive and we could get oh, more. just unpleasant to work on, so there therefore were, the cost... But we would do some Eureka, early Eureka Bissell bagless for that. Oh, you remember the Biss, the, your, the Whirlwind was just horrible. Oh, what a horrible vacuum. Oh, just and I say that because I tried to vacuum my house with one at one point. And like, it was, it was highly collectible now, though. Ugh, it's, why? Because nobody, about nobody, it. no, people thought it was good. People do not know. I know. I... So we have all these young vacuum collectors out there who collect the oh, worst, over some of the, the stuff worst of the like, worst. Oh, the stuff that makes us that? cringe 
you know. I know. It makes my butt pucker sometimes just listening to, oh, I can't wait to find one of these. I'm like, oh. You know, oh. And just because it looked cool in a brochure does not mean it was actually cool in life. No. No. And I say these things from experience because I've given everything a chance. Yeah, we've all chance. worked on this. I've given everything a chance. I've tried it. You know, I... I when I say I can't stand a vacuum or I think it's useless, it's because I tried to use it and it was I was not very successful. You know, my tolerance for low quality stuff is lower than average, but you I So think, was mine. So but was I think mine. you give things more of a try maybe than I would sometimes. Well I'll give it a chance even though I already think it's junk. I'll give uh, it a chance to Because you to, have a simplicity a go go and I, I Well if the, uh, yeah, the, the damn thing even caught fire in my freaking bedroom and I still have it. I and I would, use no, 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 no. I would have never brought that into my house. I say that as I have a Hoover. I think that I have more confidence in Hoover. Shit. Oh, no. And Hoover, if you're looking for, you know, uh, to place on my channel, please contact me. I'd be very interested in working with Hoover TTI. All right, so he was talking I about... I think Hoover's quality improved when TTI... Dude, that's helped. what I was I'll saying. I say, I've said that I, before. I say the same thing about Dirt Devil. Dirt Devil's got really bad, and then TTI bought them, and I noticed there was sort of a... Dirt Devils were always supposed to be bad. They were like, always disposable, but I mean... They, I have a... Ri I don't know if I have the original deal dealer letter from Dirt Devil, but it was like... It specifically addresses throwaway vacuums. That was like a mission of Dirt Devil. Yeah, because other manufacturers were, they realized, and, and rightfully so, that, you know, i got to give them credit, they saw that that was the way That's customers where things were, were going. wanting to go. So why not do it? So because, why not jump in? I and mean, you know, we know, everybody knows about Dirt Devil, but to tell you how many people know about Royal Vacuums, comment below, I'm sure all the vacuum collectors do, but if you ask the average person about Royal Vacuums, they've never heard the brand, but they'll know what a Dirt Devil is. I'd rather, oh, I don't know. So that's packing, repacking the bearings. I've gotten, I've gotten so fussy in particular that central vacs are the only things that truly satisfy my... Yeah, I agree, I agree there's something just better about a central vac. It makes a, a good lot. central vac. Now, and I, there's yeah, people you can't that be have going had on with jaded some... experiences by Yeah, you can't be going... No, garbage sh no shitty beam, Electrolux. Hayden, I would even say. I'd, yeah, I'm not a real fan of Hayden. I even say the Arius units I was never really a fan of. I always thought those were underpowered. Because they were always, they only made like the one size unit. Yeah, they only made one size, one motor. Yeah. They, they were just... I prefer a two motor. Although, some of the newer motors have come out. I have enough performance. And you have the king of single motor units. Of course I do. Well, that was what we went for. Why, 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 would I, anybody, why would I have anything else? Oh, so putting these washers in, like tell you, like I said, that's something I see people struggle with. That I'm also going to rotate the bearings, uh, just because. So uh, I have one more bearing to pull apart. I know that's really boring to watch on camera, uh, but I'm just going to. This actually isn't too bad. So this is just. I used to do these bearings just in a, a pile. I'd go to them, I'd soak them in some solvent, yeah, some solvent, and I would do like maybe 30, 50 of these at, a, at once. And just, I had a drawer full of grease bearings that I literally just I do out. that at work. I, I hardly ever have to do it, because to be honest, um, any more None of these just, are around that use this And bearing. the brush rolls that use those bearings are often worn out, and we replace them with the newer wood ones that don't. Which are better, us. so much better, but. They are, and again, the bearings do last longer. This vacuum is all about nostalgia, and all about. For its time, this was excellent. Yeah. For its time, this was an excellent machine. Reggie, do you think that brush needs to be touched with the wire wheel? No. To clean it? No. Reggie's just like, no. I'm just like, I want to hear the damn thing run before I go home. So those of you who don't know, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. We're fucking playing with our vacuums. I just... Reggie's like, don't do the brush roller, and I'm like, I'm doing the fucking brush roller. I know, roller. he starts going for the brush, and I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah, you know I'm going to do that. You know that this is not happening without the brush roller. I was like, oh, you can take that out later. <laughs> no, no. The no. brush is happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. All right. So I'm going to... 
Do you have a sweep and flaps event? Uh, yeah, that one on my bench broke. Uh, some friends of mine, when they were using my shop to build a uh, non-vacuum related project. I have. A fun project, nonetheless. Yes, yes, a aluminum project of the Armalite sort. Uh, that might be a dirty word on YouTube. Probably is. Armalite's probably a dirty word. Uh, anyways. Um, so the caps, the way I remember the caps is I put them in the unit, I line the brush roller up, and then I pull the caps out of the unit so I know which one's going which. So that's the quick way I... Oh, I just remember flat side belt. It's not like that on all of them, though. No, on, on, on these. Yeah. Flat side belt. On all the quad reflex agitators. Oh, flat sorry. side belt. I am sorry, Reggie. This is... Let's rub real quick. I just want to hear how smooth that bearing in that is. Let's did. see how my, the tri-flow did. I just want to see how that needle bearing did. Alright, so we're going to get this... Well, before we put anything else together, we got, we'll put the bottom. But no, we will do the bottom. Yeah, finish, finish that and then we'll set it up right. And then once you put the bag on it... Rebuilt the brush roller. We've put the ends in. And we're going to put this... This isn't, if it doesn't go in smooth, don't force it. Realign this. There we go. And the trick to putting these tabs on, if you don't want to use your fingers, some people have real trouble with dexterity in their fingers, you can just wedge a screwdriver on there like that. So we're missing some parts still. What? what parts? I don't see the headlight. The headlight lens. I wonder if I left Sorry. it in the dishwasher. No, it's right here. Alright, I didn't. So let's put the headlight on. And even though it went in the dishwasher, I'm still going to scrub it with the toothbrush real quick. Oh, my. Give me your toothbrush. I don't know why I did that, that was stupid. <laughs> so when I put this on, I put I do it like this. Do you do it like this, Reggie, when you put it on? Snap it in the bottom first or the Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the proper way to do it. And I just push it with my hand. Yeah. And push go gets in place. As far as I'm aware, that's the proper procedure. Alright. Now do you need some help with it? No. Just needs to cool off a little I was gonna silicone Sally it, but I can wait. I'll wait. Um, with the silicon sail. We'll silicon sally it in a second. Okay. If you're not familiar with the, the term silicon sally, I blame regular car reviews. Yeah, somebody literally did a silicon sally job on my transmission once. And somebody, this guy basically had to put silicone on all the gaskets of his car because it was leaking. I didn't. First, first, no, I'm talking about the first generation of Honda Fits. So. Uh, you wouldn't expect that from Honda. Honda they have leaking gaskets. <laughs> they, they had leaking like door gaskets, the hatch gasket. Uh, yeah. Lovely. Isn't the Honda Fit not even made by Honda? No, it is. Honda Fit's a wonderful car, actually. <laughs> like it's. If they have the Hondas, it's one of like the more practical. The fit and finish must not be that great if it requires silicon. Just, just the first generation, and it was, 
It was like the material that the gaskets were made out of. They dry rotted too fast. We really need to, all right. So, man, that bag smells good. Um, all smells nice like spray. full, whole thing smells like laundry and dishwasher detergent. Oh yeah. Was it Purcell you used? I did use Purcell. Oh, it smells like Purcell. Uh, and we can just see that this was just gloriously clean. Oh yeah. Never would have really thought. Um, so you just kind of line all that up. Give it a shove. Oh, you didn't, you didn't put these stupid things back in. Oh. Oh my, I wasn't where we were that worried. Usually they find their way into the flaps. I work on one of those. All right, so those. Again, that's more of a vibration cushion than anything. I want them, they're original, I have them. I'm going to put the vibration cushions on. Again, they're usually gone, so I'm not. Yeah, yeah, usually one of them's there and one of them's not. That's what I find. Again, this is Or they're dry rotted to hell. This one's actually in quite good shape. The whole machine's actually in very good shape. Yeah, it really was. Whoever did not use it quite a bit. All right, we're gonna just show, show how clean that is. Just a little bit of dust settled around there. All right, and that just goes on there. Yeah. Put the, uh, the screws in. Got the screws in. Actually, don't put this on yet. Wait till you have the screws in before you do that. I know. It's pulled up a little bit on this. Yeah, well, I just reach in and hold it down and put the screw in. Man in. And I like to put a speed of silicone on this, but for the, uh, the sake of Reggie wanting to see it in a short in the video, because I don't want to wait 30 minutes for the silicone to set, we're just going to do that. And this is just going to snap in place. Again, if you were to get something stuck in there, some sort of clog or something, it was very useful to use or serviceable. Which is, yeah, when installing bag to remove tube, it even tells you what to do. So we're going to put the bag on, which I am going to reuse the same bag because we're doing the vacuum of the, we're using the vacuum of the month. So we want to see how much dust I pick up and it's been used maybe twice in my house and I decided I was going to redo everything. So now we've got it all back together. Reggie, would you like to do the honors? Yeah, where are we plugging our hand through? First thing, I'm the one down there. We have bumped these lights so many times. Thankfully, they're not CFLs. Yeah, they're LEDs. And in case anybody did not know, there is a feature of this machine that most people are not aware of. Yeah, it's that. I'd say almost every upgrade with a cord hook has some sort of feature like that. Well, yes, but most people don't realize on this machine, they don't realize that's a double, double purpose feature. Yeah. So let's see it run. Let's see what it was well, one piece all together. Put on high. There we go. So before we got all this together, I wanted to adjust the self-propel. That's the last step that we're gonna do. All right, well, I gotta go. Inside this handle, we already had to like took it apart, uh, and we oiled the cable in there, and then there's an this, aluminum sleeve in there. There's actually like an aluminum sleeve in molded, here. Literally molded in. Yeah, this is all molded one piece. This, if this breaks, I'm sorry. If this breaks, wow, ouchers. Um, because uh, this People piece is actually riveted into the Yeah, I'm going to put some grease on here. 
And there's like some old lithium grease that somebody had put on here. And we're, we are going to put grease, but maybe not as much as they did. Yeah, just enough to give it a lube, but not enough to slop all over the place. Yeah, and this, this grease is a far better for this application than, say, a lithium grease or something nasty like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the stop as well. So you can see the, I mean, this quality of this is just quite amazing. Yeah, this, this little guy's got a hook in there. Yeah, there's a whole little happy dance and procedure one must. Happy I dance. Pull this guy around. Really uh, this all started with me, like, wanting to fix the cord real and just the self propel real quick. Well, I think we did that part. And now it's 11.17 at night and we're putting all this together. Did you want to put any on this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think, think that will matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do with the screw. Right. I had it in there. Plastic screw. Yeah. Just... You, I'm gonna let you hold this and put it on. So I don't. You can see that I can't. Dilematic handles are assembled the same way. If the camera was on when I said that. That's oh, amazing. I think that'll solve your problem. All right, let's uh, let's try it on the back. All back together. The whole thing smells like laundry detergent. It's great. Oh. <laughs> It's a little bit quieter. This thing is working so much better, spe especially thanks to Reggie for making that handle up there. Reworking that handle really made a difference. Yeah, there was a bit of stiction. Technical term. Stiction. <laughs> stiction. So thanks for watching this really long Hoover Concept One Restore video. We're actually going to take the marks off it next, but we'll do that off camera since that's boring and you've seen me do that a thousand times. So as always, please like, subscribe, thumbs up, comment below, and definitely check out our Patreon and our Instagram.